folks, Perfect. this is this is for Invest Now America, and we have with us one of a long term uh, friend, Giovanni, brother Giovanni. He's a great entrepreneur. He's a great author, and man, he he is all about educating folk. He's all about educating folk. You got a question? He'll get. If you don't know the answer, he'll get you the answer. And he's written some great stuff. Uh, he's got a lot of great audio books out there. I was listening to one a couple of days ago. Um, nice. On YouTube. So we're, we're going to spend the next 30 minutes talking to him about passive income. <clears throat> my favorite people, subject. Besides investing, my favorite subject. Yeah. And like we said, brother, you got to make the money before you can invest the money. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And, and most of us are working, you know, nine to fives. You know, we're trading hours for dollars. So sometimes people may say, well, dad, go on, man. I'm I'm barely paying the bills. And, yeah. you know, now you're talking about passive income. What is that? So, brother, that's my first question. What is passive income? So you have like active earned income. That's income that you make. So you're pretty much exchanging your your physical labor for dollars. So let's say if you work in retail, you work eight hours, you get paid for those eight hours. You might have to clock in, you might have to clock out. So you get paid for those those eight hours. Even if you work in like a white collar job, you work in an office setting, you have to physically, physically be in the office. Or nowadays you can work from home, but if you don't put in the work, you won't get paid for you know, finishing your projects, getting um, hitting deadlines. So that's earned income. But then you have passive income. And passive income is income that you make. You do the hard work up front, and then you earn the benefits later on passively, and you don't necessarily have to do anything more for it. So a couple of examples of passive income, and I'm going to use myself as an, as an example, the books that I've written. So... I spend the time in the past writing my books. So I put in the time and effort in the beginning. And then afterwards, I'm making money from it passively. I I don't even touch it. I don't even do anything for it. I could advertise my books, but my books are making money around the clock. And even when I'm sleeping, I'm still getting sales. Another thing, selling shirts. So I sell shirts on a website, uh, Amazon, Merge by Amazon. I make the design. I upload it. And then passively, I'm making money. I don't have to physically put in the hours anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, Same thing with investing, for example, in dividends. You buy the stock and then you earn your your passive income in the form of a dividend. Quarterly, bi-yearly, some some companies pay yearly. And then even like I've been looking and I've been um, researching cryptocurrencies and you can even start making some passive income with cryptocurrencies, with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and um, then the list goes on and on, Litecoin, etc. So I always look at it as earned income versus passive income. So earned income is you have to physically be there and do the labor work. And then passive income, you do the work up front and you get paid for it passively. Think about like your favorite artist. If you, if you like rap or even country music, they do the hard work up front. Yeah, they might do some touring, but they get their al- album sales. They get their Spotify downloads. So they're making money passively. Yeah. You know, I was, uh, as you were talking there, uh, two things c- came to mind. I, I once read this quote by Warren Buffett, you know, one of the greatest investors of, of all time. And he said, if you're not making money in your sleep, you're going li- to, you're going to quote unquote, you know, work like the way you said, for the rest of your life, you know, having that, to go for a job. That, that's interesting because when I was living overseas, I was watching the BBC channel and the BBC channel is a channel from, um, from England, the UK. And they, I was watching, I don't know what I was watching because this was like, I want to say 10, 20 years ago, maybe. And a documentary came up about Elton John. And it said that Elton John is making money even in his sleep. Yeah. And back then I was young. I didn't know what that meant. I'm like, how can you make money when even in your sleep? <laughs> but I know a lot better now because he has, he's making, he's getting his royalty incomes from his, um, his music. And he might have different ventures, which are also making him passive income. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, the the artists people oftentimes use with me, because my, my friends and their musical taste was the Beatles. They said, Gordon, they made Hard Day's Night several decades back, and they still making money from that. Exactly. I think um, Mariah Carey made um, that, that Christmas song. It's, it's like one of my favorite songs, but I, I blank on the name of it, of it. I think she made like 14 million just in like passive income. And like every single year that song plays on the radio during mm-hmm. Christmas, she's, she's making her million. So. Wow. It's amazing. So, so, you know, that's, that's sort of like the definition there. Let's, let's try to see if we can get to some specifics and you, you know, don't feel obligated to share your secrets per se, but no, that's fine. Got, you talk about how you do books, you've published books. And I'm, I I know for a fact you have, I've got two, two yeah. of your physical books and I have yeah. listened to three of your audio books. Yes. How, how does that, how's that making you, how's that making you money? How's that making you money? So a little background on the books. This, so the first book I wrote, the smart investors, keep it simple, 2015. I was, Always in, into investing, but then I was doing some research online and I learned about dividend investing. And I was pretty much following what these different people were doing online when it comes to like how they analyze companies and when they wait for the right time to buy these companies. Mm. And they all had their specific metrics. So I started looking at their metrics and I started tweaking some things. I'm like, okay, I could probably do this a little bit better. I could probably do that a little bit better. And I made those techniques my own. And then I'm like, because I don't invest every single day, I told myself, okay, if I don't invest every single day, I'm going to forget about these specific metrics that I need to look at. So I told myself, you know what? I'm just going to write them down. But then the idea came up, like, why don't you just turn it into a book? Because I was, while I was doing research on dividend investing, I was also reading books about it. And some of the, I also read books about, um, about Warren Buffett. And every single book that I read, I always felt that it was missing something. Like the information was always spread out. Mm. So I told myself, and when it comes to investing, it can get quite confusing and complicated and boring. So I told myself, you know what? I'm going to write it. A book about it but I'm going to write it in my way and all the missing pieces that might be spread out all over the place I want to bring that everything in one book and write it in my way so that the average person can understand it mm-hmm. and this is the book that I published in 2015 on Amazon and Amazon publishing KDP when I published it I was experimenting with different things on how to advertise the book and that book alone in the beginning, I think it made me about $300 a month, but I still had to advertise it a little bit. After I wrote the first book and it was making me money, I thought about it. Okay, this is pretty cool. Let me see if there's, there are other ways that I can start making money online. So YouTube popped up and I opened up my Gmail account. And then through Gmail, you can upload videos to YouTube. And I thought about, okay, if you want to make a YouTube channel, what is something that you're good at? Because when I look at, when I think of YouTube, you can either take the, the personality route. So people like your personality mm-hmm. and they, they want to watch you because you, you have that, that flock lifestyle that people want. Or you can take a more of an educational approach, but you still need to focus on a specific topic or a set of topics. And I thought about it because when you're younger, you're like, what do I know? I don't know anything. But then I I sat down and I'm like, okay, but what do I like? I like investing. I like fitness, blah, 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 blah. So I chose investing. So I started my channel just writing out content on investing and then recording it on my phone and then animating it. If you go to my, my main channel and you go to my older videos, my first videos, those are still up. Mm-hmm. Those videos never did anything. <laughs> I, I did it for like a month or two and it ne- never took off. But later on, maybe a year or two later, I started uploading some of my audio books. So I, the, the books that I, that I wrote, some of them, most of them I turned into audiobooks, 
and I started uploading them to my YouTube channel. And that kind of started picking up my YouTube channel. The funny thing is all the content that I wrote for YouTube in the beginning that did not pick up by the, the YouTube algorithm. I had all this content written out and I'm like, I'm not doing anything with it, but I, I'm not going to throw it away. So what I actually did, because I already wrote my first book back then, I'm like, okay, I have all this content for, from YouTube. I'm just going to turn it into an ebook because that's all I knew back then. Hmm. And when I did that, and that is the, the stock market investing for beginners and dummies. That's actually my best selling book. Hmm. So it's, it, Interesting to me that I wrote out all that content. I recorded it, published it on YouTube, but it never did anything. But then when I turned it into a book and I published it, that's the one that, that pretty much took off for me. Right. And just having an entrepreneurial mindset with it, I like to experiment. Right. So because nobody tells you what, what to do when you go down that path of passive income. Yes, you can jump online and look at, the top 10 ways to make passive income and you can try every single one, but you still have to be creative because the competition is out there. Mm -hmm. With me, I wrote, I wrote some of the eBooks. I outsourced some of them, but I saw a change in my income when I turned my best-selling books into audiobooks. Hmm. That's when I really noticed the change because the audiobook space is not that heavily populated competition wise. So I, I was able to stand out more. And having those audiobooks, those audiobooks also reference my ebooks. So they, they play off each other. Mm -hmm. well, and then I always like to experiment with different things. So Merge by Amazon was another one that allows you to, to sell T-shirts. And also just taking the, the steps of trying to be creative. Because I always look at entrepreneurship, making passive income, as being creative. If something does not work, try, try to do something in a different way. Mm -hmm. If something fails, don't look at it as, as a failure. Look at, it, look at it as this thing did not work. Learn from it, learn from it and take a, a different path. Try something different. So you always need to have that mindset of constantly trying to innovate, be creative, and see if, if that takes you to the next level pretty much because usually if you do the standard things those things are not going to work if you if you jump on on the internet how to make money online those actual topics that you find might work but you you still have to be creative you still have to stand out you still have to be unique for the visitors the customers to be interested in your products you know as as you were talking the one thing that that was really striking me it, it, it is you talk about, hey, I was thinking this, I wrote it down. Hey, I, I, I needed to be creative. I, I, you know, I need to have the mindset. I, I, and, I, and I was, it, it went back to that Napoleon Hill classic, Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, great book. Awesome book. You develop that. It's like, it's like your thoughts when you put them down and then you, you, you sort of synthesized them, then you, you made a plan of action. It's almost like your thoughts was like money, you know, it, it turned into money or whatever. And, and, and the thing also is that I like to execute. So if you've never <laughs> made any money online, you will run into even some like emotional, psychological problems, meaning that you might have, you might run into like a, like paralysis, like, you don't want to do, you think you're going to fail. So you don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. I went through all those things also thinking about, okay, I want to write a book, but what if, what if it fails? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you also get into the, the feeling of I could do this and that the feeling alone makes you happy, but it delays you from executing. Mm. I've been able to, to sidestep that by just changing my mentality, changing my mindset. Mm -hmm. Looking at it, not as a failure, but as a learning experience. But also, if you already have something that's working, and back then, like dividend investing was working for me. So having, already having something that works, makes me money, passive income outside of work, that gave me confidence to try doing new things, even if they fail. Mm -hmm. Because I, I already know that if I try 10 things, 8 of the 10 will fail. But it's those two that actually work that, that make me 
happy. That gives me that confidence. Not that I don't have it, but it gives me that confidence that I need to, to keep pushing forward and keep being creative. Most of the things that you will try will not work. You just have to accept that and learn from it. Uh, don't, yeah, don't, and- look at, don't look at it as a failure. Failure. Look at, look at it as a learning experience. Experience. And, and and that's such a, a that is such an important life lesson you just shared with us. You know, like someone was telling me about Abraham Lincoln and they, they, his failures, his failures, failure, and then yeah. boom, he became president of the United States. And then <laughs> right. one of the most famous presidents of all time. Yeah. But, but prior but prior to his becoming president. You think, man, this guy's a total loser. He can't do nothing right. <laughs> you know, but you, you, you sort of explain that in what you just said. Hey, folks, you got to keep, you got to keep going, man. You got to keep pushing through. You got to be creative. Put your stuff down. Give it a shot. And then another way you can look at it is also to, to enjoy the journey and not really focus on the outcome. Because when you, when you're enjoying the journey, you're learning something new. Let's say you want to start a YouTube channel. And instead of thinking about the money, think about the the additional, the new skills that you will learn. You will learn how to talk in front of a camera. You will learn about editing. You will learn how to, if you want to create your own thumbnails for YouTube, a little bit of graphic design. So you're, you're teaching yourself new skills, new, you're giving yourself new knowledge, things that will potentially help you in the future. You might not see that now, but you might be able to connect the dots because the more you know, it always has an impact on your life overall. So being able to talk in front of a camera, that helps you in other ways besides just making money. Mm-hmm. Brother, let's, let's, let's go back to some specifics again. Yeah. Uh, by the way, which you're, you're throwing out some real gems. What is Merck? But you say Merck by Amazon? Merck by Amazon? So Merck by Amazon is a it's a print on demand platform by Amazon. It allows you to upload a graphic that you put on a t-shirt. So you upload it and you publish it. And if you get a sale, Amazon takes care of the printing, wow. the shipping, and the customer service. So the only thing you have to really worry about is coming up with the design. And then publishing it, publishing it on Amazon. Mm. And Merch by Amazon is not the only one. You have um, you have a couple of different print on demand sites. Redbubble is another one, but I I primarily focused on Merch by Amazon. You just had good. <laughs> you just had good experiences with that. Yeah. So the, the funny thing is the. My best-selling shirt. So I'm in the I'm in Kansas City, the Midwest, and I created a shirt that represents Kansas City football, baseball, without infringing any trademarks. Mm-hmm. And my my football shirt is the one that sells the best. But mm-hmm. only if Kansas City does well when it comes to you know the playoffs and such. The last year, I mean, what's it like? Yeah, last year we were able to win the Super Bowl. And then this year we got we went to the Super Bowl, but we lost. But just getting into the Super Bowl, it increased my sales for that specific shirt. And I think in in January it made me close to two thousand or three thousand. And then in going into February, I think it made me close to two thousand. That shirt, that shirt alone. But it's, it's it's like really seasonal. And I'm not a graphic designer, so much by Amazon. It's it's something that I do as a hobby. But it, it is something that you can also make passive income with. Right. And and again, only thing you had to do was come up with the idea. And then yes. the logo, whatever. I mean yep. you didn't have to you didn't have to buy boxes and put them in the box and then nope. address it. And, and that's the benefit to me that I also have with, with books because I make most of my income from my, my book sales. It's it's not like I have a brick and mortar store right. where I have to physically pay rent. No, literally, I I don't pay for any rent. I don't pay for any. I, I have no fees when it comes to to storing my books somewhere. Mm-hmm. 
my ebooks and my audiobooks are all online. So I don't pay any specific commissions. I get a royalty. And then the physical books that you have, that you bought, those are print on demand. So whenever somebody buys a book, whatever um, publisher it's coming from, they actually printed it based on the amount of sales. Same thing with YouTube. The cool thing about YouTube is I don't have to pay for server costs. I don't have to pay for a website domain. I just create the video and I upload it and everything is hosted on Google. If I, on uh, Google slash yeah, um, YouTube, if I had my own website and I published videos and content on my website, not saying that that's a bad thing. You do want to have your own website, but you, have, you would have to think about your domain costs, your server costs, yeah. which is nowadays is not that much money. But back in the day when I, when I was making my own websites and I was making money from my websites, I got hit with um, bugs on my website, uh, my website's going down, it was a hassle. But now that I have like content on my YouTube channel, I don't have to worry about my content going down because it's, it's YouTube. It's a gigantic, big, gigantically big company that they make sure that their servers, up and, their servers are up and running that their website is up because they, they need to make their money from YouTube, of course. So based on what you, your experience, you know, I could be a single parent working 40, 50 hours a week, and I can still do some of what you just suggested. Wouldn't you say? If, if you have that determination yes, and that motivation, yes. But you will have to push through. Here's the thing. Because like sometimes people ask me, about my making passive income. And when I think about it, it, it's what I've learned is that it's one thing to want to do it. It's another thing to actually do it because I can tell you what works now, but I cannot tell you what will work in the future. So you need to have that motivation yourself to keep adjusting and improving. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. It does. I mean, you know, you, you sound just like so many of the great entrepreneurs, you know, of our time, Steve Jobs and, and guys like that. They, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like there's a science to this. Um, and, and you're definitely one of the great scientists. Brother, you, you'd you already um, mentioned Merck by merchandise books. Merck by books. Now, you, you touched upon at one point cryptocurrency. What, what are some of your thoughts on that? And, you know, what are you sort of going through right now in your head with that? So, and that's the funny thing because, uh, Corbin, you also asked me about what I know. In the past, you, you emailed me and you asked me, asked me about how much I know about cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, blockchain, etc. Mm -hmm. And back then, I wasn't paying too much attention to it. Yeah, I have some friends that, that are into it. But I'm more of a dividend investor, meaning that I like to buy an asset or create an asset that pays me some type of income. Meanwhile, that asset has the potential to go up in value. Mm -hmm. So if you think about assets, think about books. Book, a book is an asset that you can create that pays mm -hmm. you some type of income in, set, in the form of a royalty. Real estate, if you buy like an invest, investment property, it pays you an, an income in the form of your tenant paying you rent. Um, investing, dividends, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to cryptocurrencies, one thing that I learned is that you can make passive income from cryptocurrencies. And that's actually what sparked my interest in, in cryptocurrencies. Hmm. And there's two ways that I'm currently making money with crypto. There is a website called BlockFi.com. It allows you to set up an account. It's free. And if you buy crypto or if you transfer crypto into that specific account you'll start to make interest on it think about it like a savings account but nowadays nowadays a savings account you'll get maybe what 0.1 percent in interest right. but with block you have different levels if, if you have bitcoin on there you get six percent up to one bitcoin um if you have ethereum 5.25 percent litecoin six and a half percent so you make interest of your crypto money, mm -hmm. passive income. Another way is they call it staking. It's, um, it's something that I'm still looking into and I'm, I'm actually staking a specific 
crypto that I have, Cardano. But that's, all, that all, that's also a way that you can make money in the form of crypto on the crypto that you own. Hmm. And that's what's part of my interest into crypto because now I have the benefit of the asset that I own, which is the crypto. I have that benefit of it going up in value. But while I'm waiting, while I'm holding on to it, it pays me an income in the form of interest payment or more shares in crypto in the form of staking that particular crypto. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah, cryptocurrency is just a just an amazing thing. Um, you have to be careful. It, it is some um, very volatile and yes. very um, speculative. Yes. So you do need to know that if you're stepping into that that field the crypto field that you're you have to take that risk you, you, ment- you need to mentally prepare yourself for that that it's going to be um a roller coaster when it comes to the price going up and down yeah yeah I, I i totally agree with you that's been my experience with my small little you know crypto account because because like corbin you know you and i we always talk about dividend investing and that's a lot more stable yes but it's also a lot more slower paced so I definitely know that younger people are going to be more interested in crypto mm-hmm. because all the new stories that they hear compared to the, you know, some boring dividend paying stock that <laughs> it, it doesn't go up in value that much. <laughs> right. right. No, but, it, it feels, but, it, but it is safer, but you know. And, and, you know, just, just a little bit as a side thing, you talk about staking, you know, someone introduced me to um, a couple of companies that would give you the opportunity to buy a stake in professional poker players. Okay. Yeah, it was it was, <laughs> it was fascinating. You know, you put up so much, and you can put up as low as as, as little as fifty bucks. Yeah. So then, then they would go. They go to a tournament. If they win, they win some money. Gotcha. And all the people who have a stake in that particular tournament with that particular uh, player would get yeah. a percentage. You know, get a percentage wow. like that. I mean, it's and I found I found that fascinating. And yeah. you know. I, I don't know much about poker. I'm not interested in traveling around from city to this city or that city and getting a hotel and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but it's interesting yeah. that I can, I can, you know, it's it's like it's almost like investing in a Kroger or, or Philip Morris. Hey, yeah. I'm gonna put that money there, and when y'all pay that dividend, just pay that dividend. <laughs> they, they did that with uh, were they doing that? Yeah, it was with uh, per, they do that with professional poker players, and one of the right. companies. I think the federal government came down on them and they they responded and the Fed basically came back and said, well, OK, we're sorry. You're good. Wow. Thoroughly sent them through the through the ringer. You got know, it. We're, we're sorry, but, you know, you're good. You're fine. No problem at all. Yeah. And um, I, I found that interesting. Then I wanted to do something like that with uh, sometimes I do something like that in a very small scale with chess players. Yeah, uh, they go to tournaments, cash prize tournaments, and I'll say, "Hey, I'll give you hundred bucks, you know, and if you win, fine. You know, yeah. Give them a per- hundred back plus a little percentage. If you don't, then you know, then I've lost the money, no problem." And but, uh, like the, the example that you just gave me is you're using your your talent, your skills, because like I'm not a poker player, I'm not a chess player, but you have though you have the knowledge and the skills, and in a creative way, you're trying to make money from it. Right. Yeah. And and there you again, you know, you you bring up the issue of creativity. I think even in the the classic Think and Grow Rich, uh, I think they uh, dedicate whole chapters to creativity and imagination. I, I think it's been a while since I read the book, and I actually bought it from Amazon. I need to read it again, mm-hmm. but I think I'm not sure. It's, it's been a long time since I read it, mm-hmm. but I actually need to go back and read it because it's a really good book. He he had, he had a couple of more books that he wrote. And he had a, a, a thick one that I read through a little bit. So mm-hmm. even even the author of Think and Grow Rich, he, Napoleon Hill, mm-hmm. that's not the only good book that he wrote. He wrote a, mm-hmm. a bunch more. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to check into that because it was it was that book was really impactful for me. Yeah. That was that was really something. Brother, have you ever checked into um, public domain books? Books are in the public domain, and and do what with them? Um, resell them, basically. You're allowed to the, the um, you're allowed. They no longer have copyrights attached to them. For example, yeah. something like 
or the like the Bible or Up from Slavery, and there's some other classics. You'd be surprised at, the, at a lot of the Shakespeare works. Yeah. There are no copyrights on them, so you can. I'll, take- I'll, I'll look into that because with with like the public domain stuff, it's always in the back of my mind, but I haven't really thought about how I would be able to monetize it and if I wanted to monetize it. So yeah. when when you when you just told me that, I'm thinking about maybe turning it into an audio book and then mm-hmm. publishing it on YouTube, make some make some extra money with it. That's like the first thing that came to my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I... I if, if, if it's legal, I, I would have to double check to make sure everything is legal. Right. You do. But... You have to deal with those, those rules. But I, I was like, somebody had introduced that idea to me, you know, several years back. And uh, he said, dude, they, there's no copyright on this. This is why they're able to yeah. do what they do. Like, and I said, uh, you, you can't be serious. And he specifically turned me to the King James Bible. And he said, look, here, these people are doing the King James Bible. And it's like a buck. How do you think they can afford to do that? Why do you think the dollar store is doing it? They ain't doing it because they don't care about no the faith or anything like that. They're making money yeah. from this. Exactly. And he said, look, at, look at it. And when I looked at it, they make it, they let you know the manuscript itself, yeah. not copyrighted. What they can cop, what you can copyright is the cover and any mm. illustrations you put in it and any forward you put to it. Gotcha. Interesting. So yeah, and and then the guy was telling me about it's true for um up from slavery, no copyright yeah. on it. A okay. lot of the Shakespeare works, Hamlet no, there's no copyright on it. Yeah, Lear and all those things, no copyright on the copyright is on when the people we publish it. Yeah, it's on the cover, it's on the um, illustrations, it's on the foreword, it might be on the study guide, but not the actual play itself, the actual manuscript itself. We got it. That makes sense. It's it's, it's 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 fascinating when you when you when you think about it, and you know there is some uh, potential there. I only thought yeah. about doing it for with up from slavery with uh, using it as sort of like a premium gift. Yeah, if you donate so much money to uh, yep. you'll be able to do con- uh, videos on this, I'll give you a copy of uh, free copy of uh, up from slavery as a premium gift. You know, you gotcha, you gotcha. Sense. Yep. But anyway, brother, that's 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 a little off subject, man. I appreciate the time you you spend with us, man. Are one you more bringing thing. out anything new? Um, say, say that one more time. Are you bringing out any new books? Um, I, I was actually having my books translated into Spanish, so I was publishing those, and then I actually uploaded those to another YouTube channel, which is on my name, and I'm trying to get approved for monetization for that channel. So we'll see how that goes. But one thing that I did want to mention is that um, nowadays we have the benefit of technology to make money online. So if you look at the past, you would need to physically go out and rent out some space or have a physical store and then take it from there. But nowadays, even myself, I make most of my money online. I can, and I, I have the, benefit of doing that anywhere in the world as long as I have an internet connection. Right. Wow. That, that, that's a benefit of having the technology that we have today. You're not limited by, by location or specific neighborhood. You can pretty much do the work whenever you have an internet connection. And Even think about, think about investing. Right. It's also, back in the day, it, it wasn't as easy as like how it got as easy as it is, mm-hmm. meaning that you can buy and sell your investments online. You can even do it on your mobile phone. Yeah. Back then, it, it wasn't that that easy. It was, you had to call your broker. The broker had to call somebody on the, 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 the New York Stock Exchange floor to, in order to buy and sell your shares. So it was a whole ordeal. And then you have to pay a commission fee. Nowadays, you can just jump on your, on your phone punch in a couple of numbers and you, you just bought your shares and you can do that wherever you have an internet connection. Same thing with passive income on not making money online. Well, you know, after it was after reading your book that I started doing, I, I was like, I'm reading, you know, it's your book on, uh, it's your book on passive income. And uh, I was like, wait a minute, this guy's telling me I can do this on the internet. 
Because yep. I was still in that old frame of mind that you just said, well, I need to get a broker and all that other kind of stuff and pay all those fees. But you you were explaining your books and actually giving the website addresses. So I chose one. Boom. I've, I've been in, in every since and I ain't getting out. Awesome. awesome. Out. I'm, I'm doing more. And then I even set up an account for my great nephew and my daughter. Because like yeah. Now, someone like her, she probably really would pick up on the, you know, some of the things you just said quicker than me. Because, yep. you know, oh, yeah, I'm still. Most I, savvy. Yeah, far more so. She would take me in these daggone computer stores and start talking. I don't know what the heck you're talking about, girl. What, what, yeah. what you mean? But they know this stuff, man. It, it's just like, I don't know. I guess it's just they just they just know that stuff. Yeah. And and going back going back to the passive income topic, the way I always look at passive income is is not necessarily what do I need to do to make money. Change your mindset. Look at it as what do I want to do. And if I like if if there's a specific thing that you like to do, see if you can make money from it. Mm. Because it's hard to make money from something that you do not want to do. Right. Because you don't, you will not have that. It's a cliche word, the passion for it. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing something that you enjoy doing and money would not necessarily be an issue, you're just enjoying the process of learning something and the money will be that, that extra benefit. And once you start making a little bit of money, then you can look and see how you can scale it. Right. Brother, we're going to conclude there because, as usual, you, you really dropped a good nugget right there. And I, I really hope that people uh, listen to that and, and replay it because what you just said is so, so very important. Brother, appreciate you, man. Hope to have you on again sometime. Yeah, anytime. Just shoot, a, shoot me a message, shoot me an email, and we can always jump on a call, do a okay. quick interview. Yeah. <laughs> and All always right. thanks for having me. All right, brother. We'll awesome. be in touch. Will do.